media plate sterilization methods. The following presentation is by yours truly and Aquaplates Prepared Media Plates. In this video, I'm going to show you why you have some choices when it comes to media plate sterilization methods. You'll learn several methods of media plate sterilization, how each sterilization technique works, and which method is commonly used in the micro lab. How's that sound? Okay? Great. Let's get started then. Why do we sterilize media plates anyways? Well, media plates are used in many different industries and sciences to grow specific types of bacteria. In order to be sure we are culturing or growing the type of bug we want, our target microorganism we'll call it, we use specific types of food called agar. Also, to be sure we don't cross-contaminate our experiment, we want to make sure we start with a sterile media plate. Sterility means the absence of all living things. What methods are used to sterilize media plates? Well, let's start off with gamma radiation. One of the most widely used means of sterilizing media plates is the use of gamma radiation. A high energy photon is emitted from an isotope source, usually cobalt-60, which in turn creates an electron disruption in products. This process is called ionization. If it's a living cell, this disruption will cause DNA and other structural damage to the cells. Photon-induced molecular changes in structure result in death, destruction, well, generally a really bad day for any receiving organism. This type of sterilization is usually reserved for larger processes, but also for things like fruits and vegetables. Want to build a gamma radiation plant in your backyard for fun? All right, here's what they look like, but you're gonna need a pretty big budget. Sterilization of media plates, second on the list, ethylene oxide. Ethylene oxide is a chemical compound commonly used for sterilizing a wide variety of items, including medical instruments and single-use diagnostics tools, like scalpels. Sterilization occurs through time, humidity, temperature, and of course, the concentration of ethylene oxide. Disruption of organism reproduction is caused by deoxyribonucleic acid destruction with the ethylene oxide acting as an alkylating agent. Okay, so why don't we use ethylene oxide? Well, certain items, like pharmaceuticals or electronic components, can't take high temperatures or steam exposure. But what else? Oh yeah, well ethylene oxide is very poisonous and you need lots of special precautions and bells and whistles just to use it safely. More specifically, ethylene oxide has a boiling point of 10.73 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. Mixed with nitrogen or carbon dioxide, this is an explosive condition that requires the intrinsic safe material zoning for security of staff and personnel as well as for the security of gas mixing, mixing process itself. So there's some good reasons not to use it for fun in sterilization. Number three on our list, autoclaving to sterilize. Media plates can be sterilized via steam autoclaving as long as they're made of glass or autoclavable plastic. Autoclaves kill organisms using steam heat under pressure over a certain period of time based on the batch load. The larger the load, the longer the time. Autoclaves, autoclaves can be dangerous to operate and require a skilled technician as in all of the previously mentioned sterilization methods. Usually, we'll autoclave at 15 psi or pounds per square inch at 121 degrees Celsius. Are your media plates really sterile? I mean, how do you know? When you run a batch of samples, analysts will generally run a positive control and a sterile control with each batch or set of samples. A positive control, like the E. coli you see on this modified MTech plate to the right, is a plate that is run or analyzed after having been inoculated with a certified and known bacteria or target microorganism. Usually in the US, we use bacteria strains certified from the ATCC or American type culture colony. Sterile controls in your runs are important and it's a plate that's inoculated with sterile water or nothing 
and incubated along with the rest of the batch to ensure that the plates themselves are not a causal agent in any cross-contamination issues that may arise. And believe me, it does happen. No growth on a sterile plate is what you're looking at to the right. Number four, groovy UV or ultraviolet sterilization. Although there are even more exotic methods for sterilizing objects such as media plates, the last topically relevant method we'll talk about in this presentation is UV or ultraviolet sterilization. UV produces some UVC and shortwave emissions which wreak havoc with the nucleic acids in the DNA and RNA of organisms. Works well for disinfecting residential water systems as well. Don't look too close at the light. UV light is harmful to your eyes. Okay, now you know about some sterilization techniques and their uses. I hope this short presentation has been helpful for you. And if you'd like more information of this type, please feel free to visit us at www.aquaplates.com. And if you want to grab a free report on how to pass your DMRQA micro every time, just go to the link. Thanks very much for your time. Have a great day.